Hey, what is going on YouTube? Hey, Ron here. We are back in the Buffalo, everybody. The Terror at Tier 8. Um, just don't have many uh, replays kind of saved up. I have a lot of excellent games, but this is one I needed to put up, and I know a few people have been asking for Buffalo gameplay and or, um, you know, just games. So here it is. Um, she's an excellent cruiser at Tier 8, but this video is important for a few reasons. Number one, uh, I get 15 Citadels, uh, some of which on a Yamato, I think, or maybe a Musashi, uh, almost dev striking a few of them. Um, so that is more towards the middle, but we, we only get those citadels because of our position. Uh, we take this central island here, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the importance of, you know, getting American heavy cruisers into position. Um, that is kind of the most fun for me. We actually just ended a great stream, um, having a lot of fun. So if you're not, you know, in the Discord or a member, make sure you join the channel or hop in the Discord there, and hopefully we get training room soon. But regardless of that, um, I have fun playing heavy cruisers close to islands, it kind of tests your skill. Uh, we have an, another another Des Moines game, um, which kind of puts us into position there when we were focused by a lot of ships. But you'll notice we were actually targeted there. And uh, this is where overview camera really helps. Um, because we were spotted and targeted, which is in our uh, build, we knew that we either, we were watching for shots with the overview camera, and that is why I use that. A lot of people are like, oh, it's twitchy. It makes it hard to watch. And I know that I kind of overemphasize that sometimes, but that's just you know, the sensitivity and how I'm used to playing. I know it can be hard to watch, but what that is doing is allowing me to get a better view of the field of play. Um, it, it allows me to see incoming shots. If I'm being shot from the far right, I need to be able to see that. Uh, in the meantime, though, here, Legendary V19, an excellent player, smokes me up, and uh, we go ahead and radar this Elbing. Now, this is a little bit of a uh, more advanced tactic, the, the smoke and radar. Um, we kind of catch this Elbing off guard, he should have been aware of our division, however. Uh, unfortunately, I am inside my smoke firing penalty, so I'm actually going to kite out. Because of our proximity to this island, we cannot get shot from the right. We can get shot from the left, however, but if you notice our target indicator and our position, we turn pretty hard out, so we're going to go ahead and just continue that turn um, as we take a few salvos from the Palmer. Uh, the good news is the Palmer only has 15-inch guns, so he was not going to do much to our angled 27 millimeters of the Buffalo. Now, the Buffalo, similar to the Des Moines, will suffer a lot um, for any guns above 15 inches. That 27 millimeter plating is very strong, but it absolutely loves to be abused by 406s and above. Now, for some reason, this Des Moines is sailing broadside as we lose a cruiser right off the rip. And we actually, I think I remember I punched this guy pretty good. Yeah, we take out his engine um, at 15, what is that, 16.5 kilometers there. So if you notice right off the rip, we, we are just DPMing, and that is your job in most cruisers, but especially American cruisers light and heavy. The other main job of American light and heavy cruisers, besides DPM, is radar support. And the only way to accomplish this is to get close to, to the caps. The Russians have a little bit longer range radar, slightly different armor schemes, although fairly similar. But in order to get close enough to the caps, in most cases, you will have to use island cover. And you can see this island here in the center is my best friend. Um, people who say camping behind islands or it is boring or whatever, that's fine. It may be boring, but it's how you play these ships. If you want to be effective in these ships and play them you know, to their fullest, you need to use island cover. Um, I'm tired of it being like this, this taboo type thing where you can't do it or it's boring or whatever. Um, if you don't want to play that way, that's fine, but uh, this is the absolute 100% way to play these cruisers. Now, that being said, if you're sitting behind the same island the entire game and your team is not being, you know, if they're not being pushed or whatever, then yes, you are playing that incorrectly and being useless for your team. Island humping, moving from island to island, um, and, you know, helping your team with either radar or DPM is the strategy for that. In the meantime, though, this Burgone has moved up as our team two ships have died on the left side. So we're kind of holding off the weak side here uh, as he takes a torp. And I actually make a little bit of a mistake here. I didn't close up my angle. I wanted to get all four guns on target, which is, is a mistake, especially against a ship that you can bow tank. But the Burgone gets just enough to Citadel me um, and take a good almost half of my health here. So a little bit of a mistake, um, but we, we make him pay for it. So we're... we're Again, up on ships now, but I'm in a little bit of a crossfire. But because of our position and proximity to this island, we are not really easily accessible from the ships in the center near A. Um, or A and B, however you want to label that. 
But if you'll notice, we are now located and targeted by one. So that tells us that the last remaining destroyer is close. And you can see our twist and track is actually telling us he's right there. Tactic decides to go out in uh, a blaze of glory. Uh, he wanted whiskey and coke number 25. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but there's not much else for him to do other than, you know, abuse Wildery build and maybe get 12,000 damage in secondary hits. The Pomeran is one of those ships you have to get the right circumstances. Um, and unfortunately, he just didn't get those. Um, now, he could have torpedoed or rushed the Burgone, but he's putting himself in a crossfire with all of the remaining ships. Now, unfortunately, uh, we didn't we did not have our hydros. We used it earlier, and we could not spot these for torps for tactic. Uh, but we are able to back up with propulsion mods, so we do dodge these. But unfortunately, they take tactic down. Um, now we go ahead and use another little bit of a I say advanced tactic, but it's just basically shooting your front turrets around an island. Uh, if you click on your guns and zoom into your guns, you actually get a better point of view, which is what I'm doing here. Um, you know, trying to not be detected while also shoot around uh, the island at this Yamato. I learned that from Flambass a long time ago. Um, but regardless, we're still holding this position. We are up on caps now. We are tied on ships. Um, the point influx is not in our favor, though, as DDs are not worth as, as much as battleships. Don't know why. I think they're worth more. But you can see we're actually undetected here, or, or unspotted, uh, shooting around here. And I could have probably loaded HE. We're going to bounce and shatter a lot of our AP, but I wanted to keep the AP loaded just in case uh, either that Cobb or something came across broadside. Uh, a lot of people shoot HE at Kabas, and while HE does a lot of damage, the Kaba has a armor plate in the middle which arms a lot of medium caliber and even battleship caliber guns, so if the Kaba comes across broadside, I could shoot him. Uh, uh, Legendary actually communicates that he will have shots on the Kaba and tells me to radar, so I do, um, and thanks to that, he does get a few shots on the Kaba here. On the opposite end of the equation, that Kaba was shooting, um, that Kaba and the Stalingrad actually were shooting at Legendary, uh, so he smokes up. Thank goodness the Stalingrad doesn't radar right now, or this game could have potentially went a different way. We are up in terms of our destroyer advantage as their last destroyer goes down. That Kaba would have died. Um, the question is, does you know, if the Stalingrad radars, would he have taken Legendary with him? The Stalingrad is actually a friend of Legendary and a viewer of the channel, so GG's Joey, I think you were in the other Republic game, but... Right now, I am in a tricky spot. As you can see, this Yamato is coming around in the front. I have a Stalingrad in the middle, kind of behind me here, as well as a Marlboro behind me. So I can't really back up. I can't really go forward. Now, we mentioned that camping behind one island the entire game is not the most effective, but when the enemy team comes to you, um, I didn't have any other choices. But uh, as you will see on the scoreboard, um, and you, you have seen with our radars, that we have been highly effective um, in securing this cap and killing enemy DDs. So doing our job as a heavy cruiser. But the next part of this is honestly, and this is honestly the most, you know, the, the best part of the game is, is this next little engagement. Um, I'm gonna try and play this as best I can. I thought about going broadside, um, but the Buffalo and the Baltimore would just get Citadel. Now we know that, you know, I feel like if I was in the Yamato, I would overpan a broadside Buffalo, but I'm gonna try and maintain my angle. And I actually see that this Yamato is not hard pressing around this corner he's just slowly doing it mainly to probably get a shot at this alaska i'm not sure what the alaska was doing but that's besides the point like we mentioned um if you're alive and you should try to stay alive you know try, try to do the most for your team um, but we're using that trick we just talked about where we're undetected well we just get detected but where basically this yamato cannot shoot us and there's 10k six pens right off of his nose a lot of people underestimate aiming at the bow as you see here we that is five that is 11 pens for almost 20k um in what eight nine seconds of the reload the our dpm reload that we have and there is 14k to that yamato five pens and one over pen now i thought we were going to get close enough here and i'm just waiting for it he puts up his plane i'm i'm not at the best angle um, you can see that this Palmer in back here actually has my side. We do get a bit lucky here. He smacks me very good. I preemptively pop the heel, um, but we do not get dev struck. Now he is closing in. We decide to go forward and not yet, not yet. Pay attention though. Uh, we close the distance here. We're aiming for that front cheek and here it is. <laughs> Boom, Citadel. I don't know if you can hear the excitement in my voice, but this was just a, such a fun moment. You can see the <laughs> five citadels we almost dev struck yamato as he gets his front turrets off i actually think he got all of them i'm not sure and we get the kill we literally have a butthole hair of health left <laughs> as i kind of just cheese the camera here but 
Um, we pretty much outplay Yamato at two kilometers there. Now, we did get lucky, obviously, with overpens, um, but that is game mechanics. Um, so utilizing game mechanics, you know, I'm sure if, you know, we all know a battleship player who is raging right now, and obviously in real life, that battleship um, would have torn that cruiser up. But in World of Warships Legends, when you can use game mechanics to your advantage, you should absolutely do so. Um, now, whether I was over-angled, you know, less angled or whatever, um, is besides the point. But bringing it back to the earlier um, salvo of that Burgone, if I don't take that Bur Burgone salvo, I actually um, am, you know, I still have a lot more health than I do right now. Um, but we see this Stalingrad backing up, and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I still have a little bit of health um, in American 8-inch guns, which I can use. Uh, now, I wanted, I wanted to just peek around and use the back end of my ship, but I actually see that this guy is going full force around. And I'm a little disappointed in this salvo. We actually get seven citadels um, for a massive chunk of damage. And we almost got the reload, but he unfortunately takes us out. So you can see on stream there, I'm just kind of, you know, in, in uh, pure bliss right now with the 15 citadels in a matter of seconds. But that is the importance of holding a central island position. Uh, in a heavy cruiser, especially an American heavy cruiser. Um, whether or not you find it boring is besides the point. Uh, we did our job, we did it well, and uh, we had a huge impact on the game of the high caliber and uh, a sink on the other battleships there uh, and assistance on the destroyers. So make sure you're doing your job. I see a lot of cruisers trying to hunt damage, kiting to the back of the map, you know, playing the cruiser the absolute wrong way. And in certain situations, you will have to kite, you will have to run, you will have to put your ship in, in not you know, not an island position, but when you can and when the game allows for it, you should absolutely do so. Uh, as our gearing goes down, emphasizing why uh, it is very important to stay alive <laughs> and try to do the most to win for your team because they will do everything in their power to throw it. Um, you can see Legendary is very low here, but we get the win in this game. Um, shout out to Tactic and shout out to Legendary um, and for the few other players on our team. Um, and shout out to, to those ships for allowing me the, the opportunity to get those Citadels. So maybe not the most exciting game, but it teaches us principles, uh, you know, of American heavy cruisers, um, heavy, heavy cruisers in general, but especially Mary, American heavy cruisers. Um, I will go ahead and throw the build up on the screen. I hope you guys have a fantastic Sunday. Huge shout out to everyone who joined me last night. If you guys haven't watched that or didn't watch it, make sure it's, you know, you go back and watch it. It was, it was an insane amount of fun, so... I love you guys. I appreciate uh, the support. Likes, comments, all of it help the algorithm, sharing with your friends, you know, joining the Discord, joining the channel. Um, it's all appreciated. I love you guys. Take it easy. I'm out. Peace.